some prepared questions for our panelists, um, but we also would love to hear what questions you all have. So as you have questions, and we're going to incorporate these throughout the panel. So as you have them, if you could just send them to me directly in a chat, I will try to ask as many as possible um, throughout our time tonight. Um, also, to keep the flow of the panel going, uh, for some of the questions, everyone will answer. For some of them, we will be directing them to specific panelists to answer. But of course, everyone will get a chance to contribute if they have something valuable that they would like to add to that question. Um, I think the last thing that we wanted to make sure we say up front was that one of our panelists, Chloe, is going to have to jump off just a little bit early at 610 for another obligation. So don't be alarmed if you see her leave. Um, and we appreciate the time that you are able to spend with us tonight, Chloe. And that goes for all of our panelists. Thank you so much for being here. Um, after we get through our questions, we're going to be sharing the best way to contact our panelists at the end, along with sharing some really valuable um, data focused resources that you guys have access to as students. Um, all right, did I miss anything? I think that's all the housekeeping. All right, in that case, I will go ahead and kick us off with our first question, which we would like each of the panelists to answer. Um, so if you could each please introduce yourselves. Tell everyone, what was your major in school? What was your internship experience? And what is your current role now? And anyone can go ahead and start. I can get us started. Uh, my name is Caitlin Jesse. I currently work as an assessment analyst at FSU's Office of Institutional Performance and Assessment. And I'm a prior intern at FSU's Office of Institutional Research. I completed my bachelor's in statistics here at FSU, and I'm currently working on my master's in data science as well. I'm excited to get to answer some questions for you all tonight, and I hope I and the other panelists are able to provide some useful insight uh, regarding that transition from internship to full-time work in data analytics. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Olivia Plunkett, and I was a student success analytics intern with the Department of Institutional Research from August 2021 to July 2022. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in statistics in the spring of 2022, and I'm currently a technical, technical consultant at ITRX Solutions. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Goodwin. I was also a data analytics intern at the Office of Institutional Research, um, my last year and a half or so of my bachelor's degree in finance. I'm super excited to be here and uh, to answer all your questions. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Patrick. Um, at IR, I was a data publications intern during the senior year of my undergrad, where I was doing my bachelor's in economics uh, and political science uh, here at FSU. I was also a graduate assistant um, at IR as well uh, during my master's program, my one-year master's program um, in applied economics. Um, since then, I've been an associate at a small uh, economic consulting firm uh, called Keystone Strategy up here in Boston. Awesome. So a quick kind of follow-up to that so we, um, our attendees can better understand the role and how kind of data analytics um, kind of ties into them. What are some of your priority tasks that you complete in um, a day of work? Uh, I think I can go first. Um, at, in economic consulting, we try to answer questions and uh, those questions come from our clients. And usually the way that we answer those is by doing qualitative or quantitative research. Um, qualitative can mean running around the internet trying to figure out if something is true or not. Oftentimes because uh, our clients are engaged in regulatory litigation or litigation with each other, sometimes those are just really basic questions like, can I download a certain app on a certain smart TV? Which is something that might seem mundane to us, but when those mean millions of dollars down the line for large companies and the way that they do their contracts, uh, those are really important things for them. And then quantitative might mean uh, when they give us large, large amounts of data, having to sift through it really, really quickly to be able to turn around and answer the questions like, yes, on this smart TV, for example, 80% of people have this app downloaded, but then the other 20% have this other or something like that. Um, that, uh, that 
will enumerate in uh, the skills of data cleaning and data wrangling and getting as comfortable as possible in a data set um, as, uh, as quickly as possible. I think I pass it off to who's next, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah, and just to repeat the question, we're uh, that was to better understand your role, what are some of your priority tasks or what does a typical day look like in your role? I can go next. Um, I work at iTrack Solutions, which services legal and insurance clients. So I separate my time between those two industries. On the legal side of things, my typical day involves shadowing a more experienced member of the team to learn how we can help our law firm clients view, modify, and analyze their data through customized forms and workflows. So that's what I'm doing on the insurance side now, or on the legal side now. And then on the insurance side of things, my priorities are really around data management in SQL and creating Excel spreadsheets with subsets of that data that our clients can analyze. And then a large part of what I do is also communicating with clients about the status of their requests and providing them with written explanations of the Excel deliverables that we give them. Awesome, I can go next. Um, so as an investment consultant, um, I'm spending most of my day working with clients and that could be reaching out to them by phone, uh, meeting with them in person and sort of talking over their financial goals, helping them with financial planning for the future, um, supporting to them through any life changes. Um, and that's generally how I'm spending my days along with shadowing some of the, the financial consultants in the office as well. Um, at the Office of Institutional Performance and Assessment, in my specific role, I spend most of my time working with a variety of different data sources, databases that we have access to in sort of uh, data analytic roles in IR and IPA, and building reports, typically in Power BI, sometimes in Excel, aimed at a variety of different stakeholders, so sometimes at a department level, specific course level, uh, maybe an administrator's asking some sort of question in our office related to student learning outcome assessment. So that can get a little niche, but essentially it's related to student success, how are students performing in their programs, their courses. Um, and so we are bringing in as a new office, this kind of data lens um, to a lot of processes that had been happening throughout the university for a while and kind of elevating uh, the analysis happening. And so we really do try and utilize a lot of different sources in ways that they haven't quite been used yet. It's very investigative um, to provide support to faculty and staff here. Thank you. All right, so this next question is gonna be directed to Patrick, Caitlin, and Olivia. And it is, why, in your opinion, is experience with data important? And can the skills that you have learned be applied to fields outside of the field that you're currently in? I can hop back on and start this one. Um, I would say that data analytics, data science, they're, they're tool sets, really. So any experience you get applying them outside the classroom, working with data sets that weren't given to you from a professor or just found online is just great experience that you can bring in any role because a lot of what you'll do in an internship and a full-time position with data analytics is cleaning data, pre-processing data. And that is a lot different than what maybe you learn in your classes. There's not as much of a focus sometimes on that. And so experience in internships, that may be especially heavy focused on like data processing because of just the role are especially useful when you begin working in other jobs that require that kind of attention to detail. I think experience with data is so important because data is everywhere and it's generally generated by basically everything that we do online. So being able to manage and analyze data are definitely valuable skills that I think will continue to be in demand in this like data driven world that we live in now. Um, and the skills that you learn can definitely be applied to so many different fields. 
precisely because data is everywhere. So whether you're interested in healthcare or finance or marketing, like it's applicable to a lot of different areas. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, data really is just the plural of our own, um, our own individual uh, experiences. And when all of us get together and purchase products, use things, discard things, all those experiences come together into something that companies can extract value out of and they pay people like us to do it. Um, it is, uh, you know, um, I go to the grocery store and I have my list. That's a small set of data that I use to make my decisions. When everybody does that, Amazon employs uh, one of the largest team of economists uh, in all private companies. Um, and they use those economists to bring better value to us or get more money out of us or something like that. But I uh, do it well. Um, it's, uh, it's just uh, asking and answering questions and it snowballs because the more data you have, the better data you have, and the better you know how to use it, you also are able to even ask more interesting questions in the first place, knowing you have the tools to answer them. Uh, predictive things, forecasting, uh, and finding trends that aren't visible to the naked eye. Uh, can you use it outside the field? Yes. Um, really, I mean, I think it, it's, it's, it's field agnostic. Uh, it's, I, I forget who said it, but it is a tool that can be used across fields. Um, so while I'm sure that there are, I mean, you know, of course, occupations that don't use it, absolutely. Um, but I like it because you can transfer between different fields. If I wake up one day and find that I want to do something in a different industry, the tools are uh, transferable. Uh, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. It's a really insightful answer. So kind of switching more to um, your time and your internship. Um, and I want to direct this question. Um, we can go Chloe first and then Patrick. But what, um, what, which experiences throughout your internship um, did you kind of talk about or find useful when interviewing with companies? Yeah, so I honestly think a lot of it was applicable, whether it was more on the data side of things or on the interpersonal side, because this was my first real professional role with the internship. So being able to use that um, and describe how that professional culture influenced me, as well as um, the data side of things, which um, experience in data isn't really required for my position, but it's definitely helpful because as we're working with clients and as we are planning for the future, looking at those reports and looking at all of the data they're giving us and the outputs, being able to explain that in a concise way is definitely incredibly helpful. Yeah, the parts that I found myself uh, talking about were the big deadlines that uh, I was able to contribute towards the office being able to meet. Um, those are things, you know, uh, uh, employers speak a certain language in their interviews and everything, and that's why I'm glad that, that the Career Center is here to help us uh, figure out how to speak that language. Um, and so when you are able to talk about things in the language of meeting deadlines, uh, meeting client expectations, maintaining a professional uh, standard of work, adhering to branding guidelines, making sure that work doesn't seem like it came from Patrick who works at IR, it came from IR as an institution. And if you know them well, then, you know, that came from Patrick. But um, yeah, being able to attach yourself um, and, and your professional output um, to such a, uh, a great place like IR, um, that was something that I really uh, enjoyed talking about during my interviews. Awesome. So um, kind of a similar question, but if each one of you guys could quickly say what one thing that you think prepared you most um, for the real working world um, from your internship, what would that be? I would say that it was learning how to visualize data to different levels of audience expertise. Um, I think as Chloe was saying, her job doesn't require her to necessarily have that uh, use of data, but knowing how to visualize it, interpret it, present it, like that is transferable. Um, so that was definitely a really useful skill that IR especially uh, helped me learn and practice in my position. For me, it would be just the practical skills that I gained from applying 
analysis to real world data instead of the data that you get in the classroom that looks a little bit cleaner. And so being able to use Excel in my internship to clean data really strengthened those skills. And it made it easier for me in my current role too, to learn how to use SQL to prepare data for analysis, which is a really big part of what I do now. I think for me, learning a certain software, even though it's not software I use now, definitely helped me learn the logic of these types of programs. And so when I'm pulling certain reports, um, when I'm organizing uh, groups of clients that I'm reaching out to for a specific purpose, I'm recognizing a lot of the same logic being used that makes it a lot quicker for me to catch on than some of my coworkers. For me, I think it was um, learning how to take ownership of certain parts of a workflow when I'm working with people who are more senior than myself. Um, in a classroom, you can own the entire project. And, um, and like Olivia said, um, the other problem with data in a classroom is that it's often very clean or there's always a right answer that somebody's trying to poke and prod you towards. And that's a great way to learn. But um, when you're faced with a data set that uh, you might not even know the questions you want to ask it before you get into it, start exploring, start asking, but learning how to own certain parts of the workflow. And for me, that looked like validating the data, cleaning it and doing some initial sums uh, and being able to communicate what I've learned about the data set to somebody who's going to do a lot more complicated things than I've been doing so far and who needs to know some really specific things like there's a lot of zeros in this data set. I know you're doing something uh, uh, stat heavy later on that might be important for you or uh, distributions and things like that. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So I think many uh, attendees here tonight might be interested in careers in data analytics or pursuing internships or jobs in that field. So for those attendees, what advice would you give them to help, them, help prepare them um, for making their application as strong as possible based on your own experience and what you feel worked well for you. And, oh, sorry, I didn't address it. Anyone can answer this one. <laughs> yeah, I spent my whole undergrad and grad school um, trying to figure this out because um, I, saw other people were learning data programs in you know sophomore junior year um i was sitting next to a guy in class i'm trying to do something in econ on excel and he was using python and i was like really mad because you know i felt like i was owed it for some reason you know i'm not but um i was i, I was always trying to figure out um how to do it thankfully there are so many good free resources online especially nowadays um for all the open source you know um, uh, languages and everything. Um, I was trying to, you know, figure out how to pay for Stata or something, and that's just completely not needed anymore nowadays. Um, employers are very, very open to you knowing R and Python and, and SQL, and those can be very, very easy to learn online. Um, the thing to manage is finding good resources, and what you don't get from class or work is having to stick to a data set because at work you get a data set you have to do something uh, uh, with it and it's not an option to kind of drop it um but when you're self-teaching there is a temptation you know it's like a weekend or it's vacation and you're trying to take the time to do things on your own uh so it requires a little more discipline um but the resources are out there um so sorry uh, what was the other uh, question once again sorry i think i kind of went off you're okay. No, that definitely answers the question. Just in general, um, career advice or advice for making their application strong based on what you feel like was made your application successful when you were applying. Yeah. For the okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, the uh, sorry, I thought I was I was going somewhere. The self teaching. Can, oh, uh, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. The self teaching. Um, my point being that that can manifest into. Um, data projects. If you can find uh, a, uh, and there's and there's links online, um, data projects, that is a, um, a source of data and suggested things to do with it. And you can make an R script with it and you can go through, answer questions about it. And you can have a, uh, an, an R file that shows, you know, I know how to load a data set, clean it, 
make some plots, do a test on it, here you go. If that's something you can send to employers or just put somewhere, that really speaks a lot um, to, uh, uh, to what employers are looking for. Because, you know, uh, I grew up in a time when everybody was putting, you know, Excel and Word proficient on their resumes. And you still should communicate that if you are. But um, employers, I think sometimes just, you know, they need to see a face to know, okay, it's a real person. Okay, yeah, you know, they see some of your work and they go, okay, yes, they do know how to open this and do things. Um, so yeah, being able to uh, show your knowledge in, in, in some way, I think helped a lot. Um, so a little bit of a similar question, but maybe a little a different lens. Um, and I want to direct this towards Chloe first and then um, Caitlin. Is there anything that you would change about your undergraduate experience um, specifically related to when you were thinking about getting an internship or going through the internship and that whole um, internship search process? For me, honestly, it was all incredibly helpful. Um, I do kind of wish I'd gotten started with it earlier, um, trying, to get, trying to get more work experience earlier on, because I was focusing mainly on my classes. But besides that, I think that the internship itself was incredibly helpful. Yes, um, <clears throat> I guess my situation may be a little unique. I happened to stumble across the intern FSU program the first year it was piloted. Um, and found institutional research listed, didn't really know what it was, decided to go to that interview. Um, and I guess that'll be my first piece of advice, even if maybe you're not quite sure what an internship or a job will be on paper. If you get offered an interview, give them a shot, let them give you a shot. Um, I remember staying later into winter break than I planned to go to the interview. I almost didn't go and I worked there for two and a half years and I've worked at the IPA office, kind of their sister office for almost two years now as well. Um, so I wouldn't change anything about my internship experience because it really led me into the career path that I am today and like. But um, what was really important and that I'm glad I had but would change if I hadn't was just getting that experience working on projects that mattered to me because it's a lot easier to learn skills put your like time and effort into projects if it's working with data or a purpose that you're passionate about all right and another question um that if each of you could just briefly share, what are the main software slash programming languages that you use um, in your role? Because I know many students are curious. There's so many out there. Which one should I spend my time using? Where should I direct my resources? So I think that might give them some good insight into some, you know, practical, the practical use of some of those programming languages. The bread and butter that we can't forget is uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, that's often where I start and sometimes even finish. Um, then uh, I learned R in, in my grad program. I found that very, very useful. Uh, I did not learn Python. I kind of regret it because um, I've heard it's kind of even easier to learn than R. I know there's a lot of good resources out there about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, for me, it's uh, Excel, R. Um, I've been using Stata as well. Uh, uh, and that's just because my company has a license uh, that they can give us. Um, but don't sweat it if, 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 if you're not able to. Um, and a tiny bit of SQL, uh, just to get a certification on, on, on LinkedIn. Um, and it was surprisingly intuitive. Uh, so yeah, Excel, R, SQL, Stata, and a little bit of Python. SQL is almost exclusively what I use, so I would definitely recommend that. And then, of course, like Patrick said, Excel is great, too. Um, SQL, again, we work in Snowflake, which is kind of a database management system, and it's in SQL. And um, most of the data analytics we do is surfaced in Power BI, which has a, its own programming language called DAX that's similar to Excel. So again, that really is a good staple to start with if you don't already have familiarity with Excel. 
Yeah, I also use Excel a lot. And then um, when I was using Power BI during the internship, we don't use that here, but when I'm running reports in Salesforce, it's very similar. So I would say Power BI. Okay, thank you. Um, it's nice to know that there's some similarities across all of your fields on what, what is kind of most often used. Um, so our next question is gonna be um, directed towards Olivia and then um, Caitlin, if you have an insight about it. Um, how similar or different are the steps that you use to solve data questions in your current role compared to what you use in your internship? So in my internship, I solved data questions primarily through like data visualizations and statistical analysis, but I also clean data in Excel to prepare it for analysis by other people. Uh, in my current role, I don't really perform any statistical analysis, but I do use SQL to organize and clean data that other people are going to analyze. So there's definitely some overlap in terms of how I solve data questions now versus in my internship. And the main overlap would be like, you know, how I clean the data uh, that other people are going to analyze. Yes, I would say one of the biggest similarities is that focus on who are the audience for the project that you're working on. That's really a good place to start and kind of shapes the entire analysis and report that you're gonna build. So learning how to structure an analysis and then it's report to a specific audience and get experience with those different types of audiences was really well translated into my current position. Awesome, thank you. So our next question is uh, directed to all of you again. Why should college students be familiar with data analytics? I guess, I think that people in general should be familiar with data analytics. It can come in handy in your life in a lot of ways. <laughs> Um, in college specifically, you're figuring out what it is you want to do in your career. And I think it's really hard nowadays to get away from a job that doesn't in some way involve working with data. So learning your own comfortableness, I guess, with working with data and figuring out just how much you do want to be involved in like heavier analytics or maybe data science can be really helpful because all fields have roles that kind of fill that position. Um, so figuring that out by learning those skills can be helpful in your job search. Yeah, and analyzing and interpreting data can strengthen your critical thinking skills too, which can definitely benefit you personally and professionally. I think that's a skill that employers value. Um, and then in addition to encountering data in your professional life. Being able to analyze data is also a good skill to have for your personal life, like managing personal finances, for example, creating a budget. So it can be very useful, not just professionally, but personally too. It's, uh, you know, as, as people who are looking for employment, it's just a skill that um, companies are finding themselves needing. And so as we're looking for jobs, those are the things that they're looking to have done. And it could be true whether they need people to do data analysis or if they need people to build certain kinds of cars or, you know, where we are following what the labor market is dictating. Um, and uh, thankfully, it's a uh, it's a skill that um, uh, can be picked up. Um, and is taught at, at, at FSU and, and a lot of places online that um, I know that uh, uh, people I see asking in the chat, I'm going to leave some some resources at the end. Uh, I just didn't want to flood now, but um, I'm not just saying there's free stuff online and I'll, I'll just leave it there. I, I was always frustrated when people did that. Um, so yeah, don't worry. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with Olivia there that it's super helpful in different aspects of your life, both personal and professional. Um, and it really does help with your critical thinking skills. It helps you draw conclusions that you might not have been um, as able to draw before. So definitely something to, to focus on. Awesome. 
So uh, a few of you mentioned briefly about this, but um, our next question, I'm going to direct it towards Olivia first and then Patrick. Um, do you feel, and um, I, it sounds like a little bit weird, but do you feel you are better prepared than your colleagues entering at a same level as you um, as far as like data experience goes? But do you feel that because you had such a great experience with data before your job, did it help you at all kind of stand out even while working not even not even just in the interview process that's a hard question for me to answer because i wasn't really aware of like the level of experience that that other people who applied for the same jobs that i applied for had um, but what i can say is that the technical and interpersonal skills that i strengthened through my internship definitely helped me prepare for the job interview process and just be more confident going into that. So that was super helpful. I'd honestly say I was uh, average, if not just a little bit lower than. Uh, most people that I think were uh, going into the industry um, really because um, I only had about a year or a year and a half or so um, of, of training in these skills um, for my grad program and then the half year before that um, in the languages that I would end up working in, uh, where in the, in the industry that I'm at, uh, I was competing with, you know, computer science people and, you know, people that really lived and breathed these, these programming languages. And um, I did a lot of the econ and policy stuff and then the languages are a tool used in that field. And so I kind of learned those at the end a little bit. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, but the opportunities that I was able to, uh, to get that I'm very thankful for um, through, through the Internet FSU program um, at, at IR, um, those made the bulk of, of my skill set uh, that then I was able to market to um, uh, my current employer. All right, thank you guys. Um, so I just want to remind everybody, uh, as you come up with questions, feel free to send them to me. You guys have had some really good ones so far, um, but we do have about probably 10 more minutes before we switch over to the to the resources um, and you know demonstration part with uh, LinkedIn Learning that we're doing. So just wanted to throw that out there. I want to make sure that all of your questions get answered. Um, this next question is going to be directed to um, Olivia first, and then Caitlin. Um, how can you measure that you, how could you measure that you were learning and is succeeding in this field? And I guess you can think back to when you first started learning the skills and then going through your internship and full-time role. Um, how, how do you measure that personally or professionally, um, you know, those development of learning and succeeding and, and kind of moving forward in your career? I think um, listening to and implementing feedback from your supervisors or professors or other people that you work with, just colleagues at the same level as you, um, is a really good way to measure how much you're learning. They probably have a good idea of the things that you could improve on. So being able to take that feedback and use it to improve yourself is a really good way to measure that you're learning. Um, and then also if the questions that you're asking are getting increasingly deeper and more complex, those could be questions that you're asking yourself and then researching online or questions that you're asking people who have more experience in the field than you. Um, I think that can be another good way to demonstrate an increased knowledge and understanding. Um, and then also obtaining like relevant certificates from reputable organizations would be another good way to measure your data analytics expertise. Um, and it also looks great on a resume. Yes. Yes, I think if you have the opportunity to intern while you're taking classes, a good way to measure how your internship is impacting your I guess, experience and success would be to see how it's impacting your course material understanding. Um, I know that if you're in certain courses related to programming and your internship utilizes it, you're probably going to see a difference in how you're performing in the class because you're getting that extra experience. 
Um, but again, on top of that, like Olivia said, getting good feedback um, from a good relationship with your supervisor is also really important in an internship role specifically, because that's when you know, you're most comfortable needing more advice and asking for questions and being able to learn where you can grow best. Thank you. And we did have a question come in that was uh, specifically for Patrick about something that you mentioned earlier. Um, they asked, what did you use to show your ability to clean and process data? For example, did you use something like GitHub? Yeah, yeah. This is something I don't, I don't talk about it too often because I don't mean to come off that it's essential because it takes it takes time um i got into making my own websites uh, i mean my own on wix you know whatever but um i've always been big on on maintaining um on maintaining a professional website and since we're towards the end it, it's good to say now um but it's evolved over the years but um right now it's called pmartin.net and this is what i was throwing at um interviewers and everybody um, when I was applying around and once you have a website, you know, you set it up. Um, it's, it's, it's simple nowadays. Uh, there's, there's, there's steps and guides online and I can put some resources here, but, um, I used a website and on that website, I put the, uh, um, the publications and outputs, uh, that I had worked on, um, things from IR that were approved for outside consumption. I would put them there. Um, and, uh, data projects, I put them there. And so that was a good way for me to, uh, in an interview, not only list, you know, yeah, data cleaning in the resume line, but also show them, you know, here's something I did and you can open the code and see yourself, you know, not because I think you're lying, but, you know, employers um, like to, uh, like to, I guess, kind of see for themselves sometimes, I guess. Um, but since I've put it um, on the website there, that's where on the first page, you'll see some of the stuff that I have that I was using for my job search. Um, but then I have a collection of links as well um, for some of the resources that I've been thinking about when I talk about the free resources that are online. Um, some online textbooks, uh, some blog posts, uh, some sources for data. Um, it's not very well structured. I've just been putting this together in the past like two weeks. Um, but I think that that could be a nice starting point um, for people looking for, you know, free online resources. The internet has a lot of them and it's great, uh, but it can be overwhelming if you, you know, don't know where to start. So hopefully, you know, what I can uh, share is useful, but uh, yeah, uh, for myself, it was having a website online um, where I could put things. And without that, I think, I don't know, there should be ways to like publish a Notion link or something nowadays, or even if you if you do have an example of code or something that you can uh, print to PDF, I think you can host that on LinkedIn or something like that. Or if you're somebody who knows GitHub, because for some reason I never did, I really regret it. Uh, that's a very valuable skill. Uh, if you have passed the initial learning curve of GitHub, uh, that is a very, very good option for you to self-host as well. But in undergrad, I don't know if GitHub is a learning curve you essentially have to get over. I would prioritize Excel and uh, Python over it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, long answer, short answer. <laughs> um, yeah, website. No, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and for Caitlin and Olivia, what is something that you were asked in an interview that you wouldn't have been prepared for without your out-of-classroom experiences? I think several people have already touched on this, but for me, it would have been any questions around cleaning data. That was not something that I had experienced doing in the classroom because the data sets we were given were usually like already clean and ready for us to analyze. So that was the biggest thing for me being able to, I didn't have anything on a website like Patrick, but I think that's a great idea. Uh, but just being able to talk more about my experience cleaning data and what my approach to that would be. That I agree with for sure. Um, and also just a variety of experiences to pull from. You're going to get asked a lot of questions that really you have like a database of examples to pull from and answering. And the more you have to reference, um, 
outside of just what group project you may have had in one class. And uh, it may be limited to what you were working on in that specific courses, like topics. So you didn't get to include as broad, like a variety of skills. And so really it was just having that time and that experience of projects in my belt to pull from and answering questions. Um, so the next question we have is something that everyone has kind of touched based on, based on, but I guess it's a good question to still ask just to reiterate that there are several ways that you can get these experiences. Um, but I guess, I guess all of you guys can um, answer if you feel like you can, but um, if the student can't secure an internship um, related to data analytics, what can they do to learn and practice or what other methods can they go around? Because there are different ways. It doesn't have to just be through an internship. I would recommend starting out taking a statistics course and that could be at whatever level you think uh, is best for you, like maybe an introductory course if you haven't done much statistics or a higher level one if you have more experience with it. But um, I think that a, taking a staff class would be a great way to build foundational knowledge. I mean, I am biased because I was a stats major, but I do think that it's still important. Um, and that could be a statistics class through FSU or through like a free online site, um, YouTube, Coursera, edX, they all have great like statistics videos. Um, and I think other people have mentioned it too, but uh, LinkedIn Learning is a great uh, website to go on for whether it's statistics stuff or learning how to use SQL or Excel for data analysis. Um, that's a really great tool to look at as well. Yeah, nothing really beats grabbing a data set and trying to take it first in for however, you know, to what extent. Uh, to whatever extent you can. Um, the ideal would be to try to find a data set. One of the links on my site is the, uh, it's called the Data and Story Library. And that is a collection of data sets that are open source and people host them there uh, for the specific purpose of being downloaded and used for, um, uh, for trying out different uh, uh, stat tests. Um, it, the statistics might be after what Olivia suggested, um, because that's when you're using, you're starting to use mathematical theory to answer specific questions. Um, but the learning curve for programming starts well before that. Um, simply learning how to import and clean a data set and get some summary stats out of it are all things that you are going to have to do before you can start executing the, the stats. Um, and almost like a you know, triathlon trainer, uh, there are different skill sets that you do have to, to train on and they come together. So if you ever find the stats a little hard to get through, like I do and did, you can switch over to, you know, more text-based things in Python. Uh, once that, you know, you don't want to do that, you can try uh, uh, data visualization. Um, and they're all skills, I think, that have um, pretty frequent milestones, you know, uh, I think any day that you make a graph is a good day. And if you make a graph, you can look at it and celebrate the fact that you made a graph and wow, look at it, you know. Um, the same goes for cleaning a data set. You know, you can, uh, all of the skills, you can celebrate the, uh, the, uh, the pretty frequent milestones that developing them uh, 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 comes with. All right, thank you. Sorry, I lost track of <laughs> who all had answered that one. All right, those are all really, really great points about seeking supplemental learning opportunities um, that are available to you and finding those resources. Um, so I do want to take this opportunity to highlight one resource that you all have access to as FSU students, uh, which is called LinkedIn Learning. This is something that you can access through your MyFSU portal under the resources tab. And it's going to take you to a page that looks very similar to this one. <laughs> so this is uh, what LinkedIn Learning lo looks like. Once you're logged in, you have access to 
thousands of free courses at your fingertips to help you develop various skills, including those related to data analytics. So there's um, resources for uh, programming languages, other technical and soft skills, pretty much anything that you think of. So I'll just use Power BI as an example, because we mentioned that one today quite frequently and see what comes up here. And just with Power BI, there's how many? 1300 results um, ranging from a, a wide variety of courses, like I said, and these are all self-guided courses that are free of varying different links. Um, you can see ratings for different ones and, and kind of play explore around and see which ones look um, popular or interesting. And these are courses that once you complete them, um, you can add them to your LinkedIn and also uh, your resume to use that as you know something that you're taking initiative to learn on your own outside of the classroom, which can look very impressive to employers as well. So I hope that um, you all get a chance to, in addition to some of the other resources that have been mentioned today, um, we would be remiss if we did not talk about LinkedIn Learning because it is such, such a great resource and a free resource that um, I highly recommend you take advantage of um, as a student. Um, and Carolina, do you want to put our institutional research friend on the spot with your next question? <laughs> of course, yes. Yeah. So we have Samantha, Heather, and Katie here from IR. And we just wanted to know from a, a hiring manager perspective, someone who's already in the field, um, are training experiences like this favorable when you see them on a resume um, or multiple resumes? Um, is it vital to get like really specific certifications through classes or is any kind of experience that a student presents on the resume um, really still valuable? Um, I'll go first. I think that like any skill or experience that you put in your resume is valuable, but be ready to talk about them. Um, so sometimes I see things on resumes and I ask a question and maybe it's just the pressure of the moment, which I'm usually really understanding about, um, but it doesn't seem like the person remembered the training. And I know online training can be hard for that reason. It sometimes doesn't stick in the same ways. So before that interview, anything that you did online training on or something that wasn't part of class where you were doing it quickly, just do a quick refresher because you never know what you're gonna be asked. It's sort of like putting a language, a spoken language on your resume. If you say that you're proficient in Spanish, just be careful that someone can just start speaking Spanish to you in the middle of an interview. That's the same way. If you say that you're an advanced user of SQL, I will start asking you about joins um, because I'm gonna take you at your word and I'm curious about what you think and I'm excited about data. It's not to like test you. I just truly wanna be excited together and talk about it. Um, so just, you know, make sure whatever you put on there, you get a chance to glance through before your interview so that you're ready to answer those questions. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and jump in here. Um, I, I've had the distinct pleasure of sitting in hiring committees, either leading the hiring committee for, I think, almost the entire panel, um, or, or, or just being a part of it. So, um, and I've been with the intern FSU program since day one in institutional research. So I've, I've sat in a good amount of them. And um, I have to say that I think what really made some of the panelists stand out in this group is that um, they definitely brought the some type of a credential. And, you know, it didn't necessarily even have to be something that was paid. It could have been something like a, like a, I don't want to like specifically like name drop anything, but um, some type of a certificate from um, uh, online that they they brought with them that they that they listed on their resume. Um, but um, I will basically like piggybacking off of what Sam said, I will ask you, you know, tell me about um, that project. Tell me about what challenged you, what was hard about it, um, just so that, you know, I can kind of meet you where you are um, and be able to to have like that, that type of conversation. So um, that I think that really helped folks kind of stand out um, in terms of their hiring. Um, also, uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, um, look us up, please. Look, look up whoever you're hiring for, um, because uh, I I will pull up the our, our website and, and ask you, you know, hey, did you take a look at the students page? Um, hey, what about our resources? Um, is there anything we're missing? Anything that we need to do better um, as a 
as a department or as an institution or maybe even one day as a company, you know. Um, so I think just being able to bring the skills, but also show that show that interest. Um, and I'm not talking like a deep dive, like hours. I'm talking maybe like having spent like 15, 20 minutes reviewing the website. Um, those types of things um, really show um, that um, you're, you you want to be there and you, you know the type of, of work, um, the, the data work that we do. So um, I'm not really sure if, I don't know if we have any other questions for hiring managers. So I do have like one more just like word of wisdom that I wanted to show. Um, I actually was an English major um, in undergrad. So English and data, that's kind of hard, right? <laughs> to, to marry, marry those types of things. Um, but what I can say is that I volunteered at some place called the, the Dick Hauser Center here in, in this was a long time ago. Um, they've since changed their name, but they were a nonprofit preschool and they were drowning in data. Um, they just needed help um, with someone to be able to help them um, organize and make, make sense of some of it. So um, I was able to kind of present to them any, any, it, it was for, yes, it was for free, um, but it was, um, what was also valuable about that was also um, being able to have a reference um, and have someone that can attest to like what I, what I could do. Um, so uh, don't, don't count out, you know, places that you may be volunteering. Um, if you're working with a sports organization in, in, in town, um, just a shout out to the nonprofits who may be strapped um, for support and who may need, who, who may need someone to be able to, to kind of help them. So um, if just, thinking creatively about um, how to kind of stretch your wings. And um, even for like the English majors in the room who are interested in working with data, you'd be surprised. You're not, you're not going, you may not necessarily find yourself in a room full of computer scientists. You may find yourself in a room with other English majors as well. So mm -hmm. just wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, and um, before we get to Daljeet's question, I kind of just wanted to interject um, of the three of us, um, I'm definitely the newest member of IR. Um, I am coming up on my one year anniversary in like two weeks, actually. I'm really excited. Um, but I think what's really important, um, and I kind of wanted to speak a little bit to my interview process, um, and I've only been on one hiring committee um, in the time that I've been in IR so far. Um, even like Patrick said earlier, even if you just have one project that you've like taken a data set, done a teeny little bit of cleaning, maybe develop some basic visuals. Um, I find that like, I didn't even like anticipate using like some classwork um, from my statistics minor that I did in undergrad in my interview. And I actually like pulled that out of the back of my bookshelf, so to speak, um, and created like a 10 minute little presentation of like here's from start to finish like what I did on this data like this was the goal this was the data set we used and these were the methods we used to answer this question even if you just have one project like that to show to employers it really that's like start to finish it's it really gives a representation of like what your skill level ability is um, and I did also want to speak to kind of what Heather and Sam has said. Um, like Patrick, I was an econ and poli sci double major. Um, and I did do a stats minor, um, but my other minor was in history. Um, and Sam can attest that I'm her go to editor <laughs> for things um, for like, you know, application letters, for recommendation letters, for emails, that kind of thing. And I do just want to underscore. Um, there is a lot to be said for being an incredibly strong communicator. Like, they, we, I know this panel is on data analytics, um, and we have talked so much about how valuable data is. I would just say, like, again, if you are, like, that English major or, like, humanities major or anything like that, there is so much to be said for, like, keeping and maintaining that skill because I feel like I – witnessed in undergrad and have witnessed in my various professional roles that there are so many people that know data but don't know how to communicate about it. And I always say like your data is worthless if you can't communicate about it to different audiences. If you can't say like this is what I did, this is why I did it, this is the question I'm answering, um, you know, <laughs> like what does that do? That doesn't that doesn't answer their questions or anything. 
Um, and that is really one of the things that we looked for um, in the hiring committee that I served on is that ability to like change your communication style, kind of like what Caitlin said earlier, change your communication style, your language, et cetera, based on who you're talking to and what you're talking about. Um, so I, I just want to say like from a hiring and from an interview perspective, I feel like showing that you really have a balance of skills is super, super important. Thank you, Katie, Sam, and Heather for that insightful knowledge that you share with us today. Um, as we get close to the end of our panel today, we want to be very mindful of our panelists' time. They've been very gracious to take time of their day. Um, so we have ended taking questions right now, and we want to share one last uh, resource for those who are interested in exploring data analytics a little bit more and what it, what the application could be for different companies. Um, so let me share really quickly, and then I'm going to pass it on to Carolina and um, Jamie to close us up. You should be seeing my screen where it says forage. Are we seeing that? Beautiful. Thank you. Um, and this is a resource for, for uh, Florida State students. As you can see, it's branded with our logo right here. It's called forage. And I'm, I will be dropping the link very shortly. Um, as you log into this website or just go to this website, notice that there are different um, modules that they can go. And these are virtual experiences that mock specific projects, programs, processes from Fortune 500 companies. Um, so these are not made up companies, these are real companies that this com this uh, Forage has partnered with to provide this mock virtual experiences for students. And you can go through the process. There's one for Power BI right here. KPMG has a data analytics one that I wanna click on really quickly. And it's gonna tell you what you're going to encounter, what you're gonna be doing. So you're gonna be doing some data quality assessments, some data insights, some data insights and presentation. I'll tell you a little bit of the purpose of it. Um, so definitely take advantage of this. And again, these are some other ways that you can explore and get to see a little bit more of what data analytics is all about. And so here is a link for you all. And now I want to pass it on to Carolina and Jamie to close us out today. Thank you so much for everyone in attendance. And thank you so, so much to all of our panelists and our IR team for coming tonight. Uh, like it's also it's a really successful panel, a lot of great information um, that maybe isn't the usual um, go-to advice about this um, topic were discussed. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now um, so that we can share some of the, um, the contact information for the panelists. So feel free to reach out to any of our panelists on LinkedIn. I think Patrick also put down an email that you can reach him by. Um, I know we didn't get to all the questions, but um, I'm sure they would have eventually get back to your questions if you reach out to them through there. So I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. Awesome. And then I, we wanted to share one great resource on the Career um, Center's website. Um, you can find about in the About Us um, and then the Career Liaisons tab. Um, you can use this link. This is where you will find your college's specific Career Liaison, um, and they can connect you with some more resources, answer any questions, and kind of guide you in the right direction. All right. So again, thank you so much for everyone coming out today um, and we hope you have a